All right, panelists, what do you say? Should we get started? Do it. All right. All right, everyone, welcome. My name is Corey Cisco. I'm a graduate coordinator senior here at the Design School. We're so happy to have you join us. Um, I know from all over the world, people are joining in, so good evening or good morning. Um, so this is an information session that will go over all of the graduate programs that we offer here at the Design School. So we are going to go into some information about ASU, then we'll go into specific information about our programs here, and then at the end we're going to open up for some questions. So um, please use the, use the Q&A function during this presentation, that way we can track all the questions and we may be able to just answer them you know, through text or we'll save them till the end in order to answer them um, verbally for you all. All right. <clears throat> So like I said, I am Corey Cisco. I'm a graduate coordinator senior and I'll allow my colleague Christy to introduce herself too. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Brown, also here as a graduate coordinator. So Christy and I are gonna be the ones that will help you through the application process, through your time here at the school. So if you are admitted into the program, we'll be your advisor. So we'll help you throughout the program till graduation. And then Philip Horan, you wanna say hi? Welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Phil Horton, I am the interim director uh, here at the Design School this year. Uh, just wanna say good morning to everyone who's here with us uh, in the US and good evening to everyone who's joining us from elsewhere in the world. We're excited to have you and look forward to your questions. I hope to uh, start a dialogue with you that we can continue throughout the course of the fall. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Phil. Okay, so we are the largest, most comprehensive design school in the United States. And what this means for you is there are lots of opportunities. So beyond just your discipline, uh, working with your fellow students and faculty in that discipline, we encourage you to branch out. Um, we'll be going through all of the different uh, disciplines that we have here in the design school today in the presentation. So we encourage you to reach out to those um, if you're interested and kind of adapt your education as with, with your interests. And then beyond that, there's also um, ASU at large. Um, there's a School of Sustainability. We've got WP Carey. So whatever you're interested in, ASU has it uh, for you to study and, and integrate into your, your particular areas of research and your studies. So when you come to uh, ASU, you are not just dropped in the middle of a desert. Um, there's lots of things around to take advantage of beyond the Tempe campus. So in Arizona, we have uh, Flagstaff, if you wanna get out of the heat for a little bit, they actually get lots of snow up there. Um, there's the Grand Canyon National Park, which of course you have to visit while you are um, in Arizona, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and then we're also a short flight away from some of the big cities in California, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, Las Vegas. So um, while you're here, we encourage you to take advantage of all of the things that the Southwest has. Um, and kind of explore outside of campus. And then in addition, uh, Tempe campus is not all that ASU has to offer. So there's lots of different campuses that make up ASU. Um, while primarily our uh, design studies are gonna be in the Tempe campus, we now have facilities in the downtown Phoenix campus and in the New Mesa campus. So there are lots of resources for you to take advantage of all throughout the Valley. All right, so this is the ASU Charter, and I won't read the whole thing for you all, but um, essentially we are a research university that prides ourselves on who we include rather than exclude, and that is a core value of this university that we're really proud of. And I'm being connected to the you know local community, I mean, serving all of the different populations that come to ASU is really important to us all. And that is something that we have heavily integrated into the design school as well in um, our values and our own charter too. So why ASU, which is a great question, and these are just a few headlines that um, we've gathered um, that have just really ex expressed the, the wonderful things about ASU. And um, so we're the number one in innovation, which we'll go into a little bit. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have seen that. Um, that is something that is definitely marketed. Um, and that we're no, the number, we're top number one of the most strategic, 
prestigious universities, and we're a top 10 research university for research. We also have a lot of utility patents, which is um, a part of the innovation um, designation that we have. And then we're a top world university and uh, we're in the number one of choices for international students. This is definitely something that um, we see at the design school. We have a really large uh, international population that we're really proud of. And um, we Amongst all these other things, we have one of the most producing, best qualified graduate students that we're definitely proud of as well. So that's just a few of the things that um, we um, pride ourselves on being from ASU. So the number one in innovation, we are ahead of Stanford and MIT for uh, four years running now. And um, what makes ASU so innovative? Here are a few things that um, we have compiled. Um, like I said, we're a research university and we continue to bring in that, um, you know, funding for 10 years in a row now. There's an entrepreneurial spirit that we're really proud of here. Um, there's a bunch of faculty, there's amazing students that we have here, and we offer a lot of undergraduate degree programs and graduate programs and certificates. And um, there's just a bunch of things you can learn here. If there's something that you're interested in, it will be um, offered at ASU, which is something that we're definitely proud of. We have a lot of equipment and research opportunities for students. Um, and we'll go into a little bit more about our design specific um, resources a little bit later on in this presentation. But the, the point being is that if there is something at ASU that you are looking for, we will certainly be able to provide that for you. And um, that's something that we definitely pride ourselves on when it comes to um, resources, employability, just different um, services that ASU provides. So we'll go into a little bit more of those details um, later on as well. And this is just a breakdown of the international student population at ASU. So there's many, many countries represented here, and um, that's something that we're definitely proud of. Um, if you wanna just look at the list here, there's a bunch of different countries that um, a majority of our students come from. And um, just to note that we also support CPT opportunities and OPT opportunities for students um, here. And CPT is just what allows students to work in the United States. So we have some required internships and a lot of resources to support those efforts too. And then we also have STEM designated programs that we'll go into in order to allow you to extend your OPT here in the United States as well. So that's something that we will also go into a little bit more. So this here is the, a list of all of the programs that we offer at the design school. Um, we have studio-based programs, the Master of Architecture, Master of Interior Architecture, Master of Industrial Design, Master of Landscape Architecture, Master of Science and Innovation and Venture Development. Um, this is a new program that we're offering starting this year. Um, Master of Urban Design and Master of Visual Communication Design. Um, and you can see which programs have STEM designations here. Um, and another thing to note is where we have uh, in the parentheses the three plus and two year pathways. We'll go over this a little bit more later on in the presentation, but just to give you a little heads up ahead of time, three plus prep pathways, um, it's the same degree at the end, um, but you are starting, it's, a, it's an additional year and a summer in length. And this is for students who do not have a background in the area of study that they're, they're studying, they're pursuing for their graduate program. So um, you don't have to have a bachelor's degree in architecture to study the Master of Architecture. Uh, the two-year pathway, um, however, is for those who did have a bachelor's degree in that program. Um, and then we also have uh, research-based programs, the Master of Science in Architecture, the Master of Science in Design, where we have a, an industrial design, interior design, and visual communication design concentration. Um, and then of course, the PhD in Design, Environment, and the Arts. So we're gonna go into a little bit more detail about our program specifically. So this is the Master of Architecture program. And like Christy said, it's our STEM designated program here that prepares students for practice of architecture in both the traditional but more broadly interdisciplinary career paths. So um, this is an image of one of our previous students, Fumi. She was an MARC student. And this image was taken during her final review. And um, this project was essentially um, a visitor center where our students worked in in conjunction with the Master of Real Estate and Development um, program. And you'll see this as a common theme for studio projects. Um, a lot of the times faculty try to partner with other programs or departments in ASU, or rather they partner with communities or firms. And that's something that um, all the disciplines definitely try to do in order to kind of bridge the gap between education and the professional world, which is something that really benefits the students. 
So this is another studio project um, example, and this is where students were instructed to design a new and innovative academic building at the ASU main campus, so in Tempe. And um, these students developed detailed architectural solutions that incorporate structure, comfort systems, accessibility, and egress. Um, and this is just an example of some of the projects that happen within studio. And then here's another example of studio drawings. So these were analytical drawings from a fifth year studio. So essentially, let's just say that you're going into the two year program, this would be your first year. And um, students were asked to study precedents for their own projects, and they were designing a center for social justice here in Phoenix. And then this was taken um, in one of our facilities in the design school and they were these are wall section models that our fifth year students produced for their studio that semester and then this is one of our alum michael leblanc and he is the principal of utah design in boston and this is one of his projects the boston conservancy and um just so you know what some of our alumni are up to now this is one example from the mark program so the Master of Industrial Design, uh, this program will prepare you for a professional career in product design and development. Um, students take into consideration pro making products that are innovative, useful, safe, ecologically sound, and socially beneficial. Um, and then the industrial design profession serves the needs of society, consumers, and manufacturers, and the environment. This here is a student project. This was a modular system to construct green walls um, on the sides of buildings. Um, this was established at the scale of the window so that the product is not only aesthetically sound, but it's also uh, functional. And this here, this is a project um, in an introductory MID studio. Um, students are asked to reconsider a commonly uh, used product. Uh, this is a gas powered hand drill and you can see that students consider um, you know the entire assembly that's listed, that's down at the at the bottom of this image and this is an alum this is uh, carlos terminal he is on google's atap design team in mountain view um, and this is their moonshot design for a 50 dollar modular uh, smartphone So now we have the Master of Interior Architecture. So this is a program that has interior design with architectural emphasis. Um, so that's just something that we always get questions about, just to clarify. And um, this program specifically provides hands-on practical experience about the discovery of how people use interior space and how to better create living and working environments. And um, this program specifically will go into the design of interior environments with an emphasis on readaptive reuse, branding, sustainability, and then human center spaces as well. So throughout this program, these projects will concentrate on retail and commercial spaces, workplace, innovate, innovative learning environments, and then adaptive reuse, like we said. And here are some examples of that. And then this image is a previous studio project about a community center in South Phoenix, and this displays the emphasis on natural and artificial lighting, but also includes furniture, color codes, and then the human factors, as you can see in these images here. And then this is one of our alum from the program, Kristen Keene, and she is on the interiors team at Architecton, which is a firm that we have here in Phoenix too. And um, this is their design for the Phoenix Country Day School Shin Center. And um, she also teaches as a faculty associate at the design school. And that's something that we see um, here a lot is people who graduate from the program, if they do wanna teach, they can come and teach within um, the undergraduate program here too. The Master of Landscape Architecture. Uh, this program addresses questions and issues pressing to the Southwestern United States um, and that reflect a larger national and global concerns such as water resources, arid lands, land development, and sustainable land use. MLA grads will have careers in private firms and public agencies and are qualified for university teaching and research. So here you can see that um, MLA students work from a variety of scales. They range from smaller gardens to large urban infrastructures. So this project here was a student and faculty uh, collaboration. It was an entry into an international design competition for a project in Quito, the capital of Ecuador. 
um, this project re-envisioned how a former airfield and brownfield site could be rehabilitated. Um, the final proposal included space for a park, agriculture, a public market, um, agricultural and recreational lakes, a hotel, a conference center, and a community center. And you can see there's an the animal imagery on here. This was used to draw attention to the strained relationship between wilderness and agricultural environments and healing this relationship was an important concept for this particular proposal. And this is uh, Michelle Scheller. She is a principal of Colwell Scheller and this is uh, their Scottsdale Museum of the West project. So now we have the Master of Visual Communication Design. So this program teaches graphic design across mediums, including print, web, motion, and then the environmental elements. Um, so this program essentially will prepare students for careers in 2D and 3D design, as well as digital. Um, and this essentially covers web design, you know, animation and motion, um, design firms, advertising agencies, packaging and signage, so all of the above. And um, let's go into some of these examples here. So this particular project is a final exhibit where the students in this program would tell their design research in a visual way. So this particular um, exhibition, all the students partnered with the shop in order to build the, um, you know, the, the models that you see here in order to pin their actual projects onto. And that's something that is common within the design school and we'll go into a little bit more about the shop later on. But um, for this particular projects, the students needed to communicate information on particular social and environmental issues. And this exhibit was done by designer Margaret Sullivan where she focused on the legibility for the visually impaired within cosmetic packaging. Um, I actually went to this particular exhibit and it was in downtown Phoenix and um, it was in kind of a warehouse looking and everyone had their um, exhibits up and it was a really great uh, event and this is something that the, this program in particular usually does. So um, it's always fun to see what the students worked on at the end of the semester. So this is the Funnier Global Engagement Studio, and we'll go into more information about this a little bit later too, but essentially these students traveled to Copenhagen to learn about sustainable design and experience Danish culture. So this is where they, this, in this particular studio um, trip, they, vi they visited various studios to learn how design is approached in Denmark, and they learned about the UN sustainability goals. And then in this picture in particular, they went on a search for the giants in the forest in Denmark, and um, this this is an image that they captured while they were on their walk. So some alum from these programs. So Tanner Woodford is the founder and executive director of the Chicago Design Museum. And then Shang Ying uh, Wang has won over 30 design awards and started his own international poster competition. And now he is working in NYC and currently does design work. So the Master of Science in Architecture, uh, this is one of our research-based programs. This is for students who already hold a professionally accredited degree in architecture, landscape architecture, or a BS or MS in either engineering or science. Um, this is one of our oldest uh, specialty programs here, um, and it has uh, interdisciplinary faculty from a variety of backgrounds with concentrations and expertise in construction, sustainability, design, and engineering. Um, and grads of the Master of Science in Architecture are highly sought after and they work in a variety of fields at firms. They often work to improve efficiency in new projects um, and some are involved in policy making roles at a local, state, or even federal level. So this here is um, an example of a Master of Science in Architecture culminating experience. Um, in this case, this was a thesis. Um, and this is um, Vikram Sami. He is the director of building performance at Olson Kundig. Um, and this is a climate and performance analysis for the Seattle House Tower project. So the Master of Science in Design is also a research-based program that we have here that prepares students for further education and careers in design-related research. So we have three uh, MSD concentrations. So that is industrial design, interior design, and then visual communication design. 
So this particular project was done by an MSD student and it was an in-depth research study on educational environment design. And this research centered on the study spaces in the second level of our Heaton Library on campus in Tempe. And um, this was to understand why students choose these spaces to study. So in this research, the researcher observed students in the space to find activity patterns regarding the various interior furniture items, the lighting layout, and then the atmosphere in those spaces. And then Melissa Zlatlow is um, on the UX user experience design team for Facebook. And this was some of their work on the Facebook mobile interface. So the Master of Urban Design, uh, this program um, builds students literacy and fluency in urban systems. Um, MUD graduates are challenged to synthesize community values with complex and dynamic urban conditions for designing livable, sustainable, resilient, and just city cities. Um, past projects have included retrofitting urban neighborhoods, transit-oriented developments, and desert urbanism. Um, design, urban designers will provide policy and equity leadership about complex urban design projects. And this program has many concentrations um, with, or, sorry, many connections with architecture and landscape architecture, in addition to community development, urban planning, real estate development, um, engineering and sustainability. So this here was a proposal for the Herberger Institute for Design and the Arts Creative Campus that's integrated into downtown Phoenix through new pedestrian infrastructures. Uh, this network um, sets a stage for future development to support the cultural district of downtown. And this is Olga Bracamontes. Um, she is at DLR Group, and this was a 2017 award-winning academic project for the Make the Alawai Awesome competition. So um, how does 3 plus work? So like I said, um, we'll go a little bit more into detail into this. So students with a bachelor's degree in any other field or discipline um, are able to apply for admission consideration in any of our, uh, in the studio-based grant programs. So um, the three plus program will begin in the summer. Um, that's the, the plus part of that um, and continues through the fall and spring semesters. Um, after completing the three plus years, your student, uh, students will matriculate into the same course schedule as students admitted in the two year de degree program. So effectively in that first year, that three plus year, you've caught up to those students who did have a bachelor's degree in the field that they are studying for their masters. So benefits, um, students with degrees in any concentration are eligible for admission. Um, the three plus year prepares students to be on par with students entering the two year programs and consistently they produce work that's among the top of their class. Um, students who graduate with a three plus earn the same professional practice degree as those who are going into the two year program. Um, and you don't need to complete an additional four years bachelor, bachelor's degree for a new area of interest. So uh, this is great for students who started out um, in a different field and then realized, you know, kind of found design a little bit later and they decide they want to come back into it and, um, and pursue a career in it. So it's a great opportunity. So another exciting thing that we have here is concurrent degrees. So typically students within their first year, um, that first fall semester, they can apply for a concurrent degree while they're completing their first design degree that they're admitted into. And um, we try and reduce the length of the time for both degrees so you can save um, typically a year of time and money. And then obviously students with a dual bachelor's degrees um, have great professional opportunities and then a higher marketability. Um, we typically see students do um, concurrent degrees within the School of Sustainability, the construction, uh, Masters of Construction Management, um, you know, with industrial design, supply and chain management is something that we see too. However, we really encourage students that if there is an area of interest that you would like to pursue, um, we are more than willing to help you kind of outline a plan of study with um, a concurrent master's degree or even a graduate certificate. So in particular, the Master of Architecture um, program, they are encouraging students to try and take advantage of this because you can share credits between two programs. So depending on how many credits there are within both programs would, um, you know, designate how many credits you can share, but that's something that Christy and I can help you with if this is of interest to you. So global engagement studios. Um, so this is, um, travel is built actually into this 
program. So um, in the final year, the fall semester of your final year, um, students travel uh, somewhere for seven to 10 days uh, to learn about design in that location. Um, certainly this year, the pandemic has posed some challenges for us, um, but typically this is how this works in the fall semester of the final year. Um, and uh, some recent places that students, uh, students have traveled include um, Barcelona, Copenhagen, Japan, Puerto Rico, Mexico. Um, so locations may change, but um, the idea is that you'll learn about uh, design in a, in a different locale. Um, and the majority of your costs um, relating to flights, housing, um, entrance fees, those are all built into your tuition. So it's, it's pretty much a free trip at that point. <laughs> uh, and then when you return, you'll be continuing working on um, in your, pro your projects in that, that fall semester and into the final year, um, you'll be using the things that you learned on that trip. Um, and then in addition to the Global Engagement Studio, uh, we do have summer study abroad opportunities for students who are interested. Um, again, <laughs> not during a pandemic, <laughs> um, but uh, Rome, uh, Paris, and Venice um, is one trip, and another one is uh, goes to Greece and Italy, um, and uh, these typically will satisfy elective requirements for students. So there are lots of resources and activities at the design school. Um, we have the design library where we have over 50,000 volumes relating to architecture and design. Um, it's conveniently located right in our building. Um, we also have the digital lab that has reduced fee plotting and scanning services. We have 3D printers, we have laser cutters, we have a scanning room. Um, so that's convenient and uh, useful for your projects. Um, we have a lecture series where we invite uh, professionals in the field to come and speak to our students, give you insight into an actual, you know, working uh, designer's life. Um, and then uh, field trips in your uh, courses. Um, we have also the prototype and fabrication shop um, where we have uh, laser cutters, we have uh, water jet cutters, a welding room, all kinds of common bench and hand tools. Um, machines for working with foam and plastics, um, and a very knowledgeable staff to help you work through those projects. And they also teach classes out of the shop. So if you want to learn more about CNC modeling, that kind of thing, um, you can take electives through the, the, the prototype and modeling shop. And then internships, these are built into the studio-based programs um, as a requirement, um, and workshops that go on throughout the, the semester uh, through the school. All right, so student organizations, we're really proud of our student organizations here because they do so much, um, you know, within the, their community. And um, so the, there's a wide variety of options available at ASU at large, but also within the design school. So these are really active student associations and they um, have local, national and international chapters. Then many of these student organizations are paraprofessionals. Um, who work with professional organizations or, you know, design firms that are local to ASU. And um, one thing that I will say is these, these student organizations are really, really active and they will hold portfolio reviews, they will hold workshops throughout the semester, they will do fundraising in order to go to a conference together. So this is, I highly suggest if you're looking for some community or more connected to your discipline, um, get involved in a student organization because they're doing a lot here. Campus resources. So as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of different campus resources outside of the design school at ASU. So these are just a few of them. Um, but so the academic resources include the tutoring center, the writing center, all the libraries. There's various libraries at ASU. We have one of the branches um, in our own building, which is great. And then academic advisor, obviously. So Christy and I would be your advisors for these programs. And then health, so health services, the counseling center, and then the Sun Devil Fitness Center, um, something to note. And then student services, so there's a career center. They will help you with interview skills. They will help you with your um, resume. They also will connect you with some of the um, you know, professionals at large around ASU. And then there's also the graduate college. Um, they have various fellowships, various travel awards if you want to apply for that. And um, that's something that Christy and I are experts in. So if you have any questions about what the graduate college does, will be your first stop. And then there's also the International Student Engagement Office, um, as well as financial aid and scholarship. 
team. And then the immigration um, contacts. So the graduate admissions are the people that will get you here. So they will help you with your initial I-20 or any of your financial guarantee documents that you need to complete for um, once you're admitted, but also while you're a student here and once you have graduated, the International Students and Scholars Center will be your best resource um, for all those different questions. And Christy and I work with them for CPT and OPT things as well. So the Western Regional Graduate Program, um, this is um, a great uh, opportunity for students who live in any of the gold states highlighted on the map here. Um, the, uh, this program, or WRGP, as you may hear it referred to, um, is, it will give you 150% of in-state resident tuition if you are a resident of one of these states. Um, so it's a significant reduction from an out-of-state um, non-resident tuition cost. Um, you fill out a simple application. You have to prove that you were a resident for at least two years in one of those states. Um, and you can see the deadlines listed here if you have any questions about this. Um, you can send us an email and we'll be happy to send you um, the information and the, the link with the application. So the application process. So there's two parts. Um, the first part is the ASU uh, graduate college application. This is just kind of your traditional information about yourself, previous education history. Um, you'll have, you'll upload your unofficial transcripts when you submit the application, um, but you will eventually need to send your official transcripts as well um, if you've been admitted. Um, and then international students will have to submit um, English proficiency proof um, through the TOEFL or the IELTS um, or a variety of other, we're accepting Duolingo right now. Again, we can send you information about that and all the various options. Um, and then certain programs um, require the GRE. Um, there's also uh, the slide room application. That's the second part. Uh, this is um, kind of more specific to the design school. This is what the admissions committees are really gonna be focused on when they're evaluating you. Um, so where you definitely wanna put some of your energy into for the application. Um, there will be an electronic portfolio, a statement of purpose, and email addresses for two recommenders. Um, the system slide room will actually send them an email with a link to upload their letter for you. Um, and a note on the portfolio, um, for those of you who are interested in the three plus pathway, um, don't panic about the portfolio. The admissions committees don't expect you to have a robust design uh, portfolio for these, those programs. Um, they're really rather looking to see what are your interests? Where does your creativity lie? Um, kind of get to know who you are. Um, so if you do something like photography or drawing or painting, or um, we have a famous story of the, the sushi chef who submitted um, images of these beautifully arrayed sushi rolls that that was his uh, you know creative outlet. So you can be kind of creative in the portfolio for the three plus. Um, again, they're just looking to kind of get to know you. Um, and then dates, we'll start accepting applications um, on September 15th. And then the priority deadline is January 15th. Um, this is an important date if you wanna be considered for any of the funding opportunities that we have in the recruitment process. Um, that's the date that you have to get your application and buy to be considered for those. So this is our contact information. So Christy and I both have access to the design grad email. So I suggest you go ahead and send your emails there. And in order to get either one of us, um, maybe one's out of the office or the other. So this is just a catch all email. So we both have access to it. Um, when we are not working from home and we're in the building, we are located in the Design North building on the Tempe campus in room 162. And then I have Christy and I's um, phone numbers are there, so it is being routed to us even from home. So if you have any questions, we are able to answer your phone call um, from the comfort of our home right now, but we will be in the office shortly in a few weeks. So we will be um, able to be accessed. So I see uh, some questions have been popping up as we've gone through the presentation. So we will get to your questions now. All righty. So first question is, can you please provide me with information for what are the prerequisites for the Master of Science in Architecture? Is it a studio-based program? 
So the Master of Science in Architecture is the research-based program, so it is not the studio-based. The Master of Architecture is the studio-based program. So for the Master of Science in Architecture, we typically see people who already hold an architecture degree or have an engineering background, a construction background, or even a science background. That's typically where those students come from. So if you're interested in that, that it would be the prerequisite um, in order to be eligible for that program. All right, so is there a business management or marketing graduate certificate for those who are wanting to pursue the VCD master's degree? So WP Carey has a bunch of different um, business programs that you are more than welcome to look into. We're not experts on all of the degrees, so depending on what you want to pursue, I suggest looking at the WP Carey School of Business um, programs that they offer, but they definitely have a business management program. I'm not as well versed in their graduate certificates, but that's something that we can certainly look into if you want to email designgrad at asu.edu. We're happy to do that research for you. Corey, I, I did just paste a uh, URL from uh, about some of their concurrent degrees and certificate uh, programs into the chat uh, for anyone. Awesome. So go look at the chat, everyone. Thanks, Phil. Mm -hmm. So this is a question. Is there assistance provided to, uh, to land an internship uh, for programs that require CPT? Yes, so we host a studio night event in the spring semester prior to the summer when most students um, will complete their internship. Um, we invite design professionals from all over the valley. Some will even fly in from further states um, to meet with our students. It's an informal networking event. Our students will have uh, be in the studios. They have uh, their portfolios out. Lots of business cards are exchanged. Um, the, with the the event's goal is to put you in touch with uh, professionals to help you land that internship, although ultimately it's up to you to get that internship to secure it. There's also um, internship coordinators for each of the design disciplines, so um, they're there to help you. A lot of our faculty are well connected um, in the design, their, their design disciplines, uh, professional world, so um, you should not have trouble finding an internship. Um, where there's lots of people here to help you. So next question I see here is, will there be a webinar for students who have been admitted this fall into a graduate program and how to recreate the studios at home if they're attending via ASU Sync? So we've done a few webinars about ASU Sync in particular programs. So if you want to email designgrad at asu.edu, we can provide those recordings to you. But um, the short answer is, we will definitely be doing a, another webinar for incoming students in order to prepare them for the semester. Um, but also, your program specifically will um, all your faculty be reaching out in order to let you know how the semester is going to go. All faculty have been preparing all summer and even towards the end of spring when we went online. And um, the studios were definitely a success. So we're confident in their abilities this fall to provide a great education for everyone. But all the details of your studio will be communicated to you as well. And I also uh, pasted in the chat a link to a page that we have for new students with a lot of the webinars um, on that page. Awesome, thanks Christy. So I'll answer this next one too. So does um, the Master of Interior Architecture require a GRE? No. So none of the studio-based programs require a GRE. As of now, the Master of Science and Architecture, so that research-based program, and then the Master of Urban Design requires a GRE, um, and then our PhD program does as well. Um, I imagine that we'll move away from the GRE in future years just because the design education is moving away from that exam as, you know, um, an indicator of intelligence so um, to be to be continued in regards to the GRE but like like I said the Master of Interior Architecture does not require the GRE right now. So this question is ASU offer any scholarships or assistantships assistantships for VCD. So all of our students have um, the opportunity to apply for scholarships. We have both design school scholarships that are specific for design students um, those uh, you can apply for typically in the uh, fall into the into January. Um, there's also ASU scholarships that you can apply for, just general ASU scholarships. 
Um, I'll put, paste the uh, link to the scholarships portal in the chat here and momentarily. Um, and then there's also teaching assistantships that we use to help fund students. Um, so these are competitive, but you can apply for those. Some of them are, are uh, offered in the recruitment process to especially strong candidates. Um, and these come with a 50% reduction um, in tuition. So it'll, be, it'll go to 50% of an in-state residence tuition um, that semester. And then there's a stipend paid out over that semester as well. So um, teaching assistantships are a great opportunity for helping fund uh, your studies. All right, let's see here. So the IELTS paper test is currently unavailable. Will the IELTS indicator test be acceptable? So there is specific requirements for this um, English proficiency and I will paste it into the chat um, once I get a chance to. Um, the indicator test, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but the, the typical IELTS uh, exam will be accepted. There's also the TOEFL exam and then Duolingo is currently being accepted for the next academic year as well. We know that some of the tests are unavailable right now so that's a alternative to those tests. So if you have any specific questions about this in particular and I see Christy just pasted that link for you and that you can go ahead and review. All of that information is up to date as that's a graduate admissions requirement but if you have any questions just let us know. There's one uh, question here um, uh, from an anonymous attendee. It says, can the Master of Architecture and the Master of Urban Design be a concurrent degree? Uh, absolutely. In fact, uh, Olga Bracamontes, the, the uh, alum uh, that we referenced uh, when talking about the Urban Design program, was one of a number of students who have uh, completed both the Master of Architecture and Master of Urban Design uh, programs concurrently. And uh, certainly there is a lot of value to pairing those two degrees, uh, particularly relative to your own expertise and uh, your own, let's say, uh, career arc. So great question. So the next question here is what would be the best degree for interior design and what would be the prereqs? So the Master of Interior Architecture is the studio-based program for interior design, essentially. If you want to practice interior design, that is the uh, program that we recommend. We do have the Master of Science and Design with an interior design concentration. That is a research-based program that will be a lot of It'll be heavily um, focused on reading and writing and then doing research in order to complete applied project or thesis at the end. This is a program we suggest for people who want to, you know, do design research or even teach later on or want to prepare themselves for a PhD program. So, like I said, if you want to practice interior design, the Master of Interior Architecture is what I would recommend. The MSD program is more for design research. The prereqs to that, so we have two pathways for the Master of Interior Architecture. If you have the undergrad degree in interior design, the two-year program would be what I recommend. If you have a bachelor's degree in a different field, um, then I would suggest the MIA 3 plus program that we described. So if you have any questions about your particular situation, designgrad at asu.edu is what I recommend emailing, um, and we can kind of talk you through that too. Chris, do you want to answer one, the one you got here? Uh, for the three plus programs, are students able to place out of foundational courses if they've taken similar courses through continuing education or extension programs at other universities? So, yes. Um, what you would do is if you took courses at another university, um, you would send us an email to Design Grad, um, and we would and we would request your um, the syllabus from that class and your transcripts. We would then send that to the program head and ask them if they would consider any of those as transfer credits. Um, if you took any of the courses at ASU in your undergrad, um, you took some of those uh, undergraduate level courses from the three plus program, you do not have to take those again, assuming you passed that class. Um, so yes, that is a possibility. Oh. And also I should say too, um, if you have a strong portfolio, you may be waived just entirely without sending those syllabus. Um, you may be waived of the summer semester, depending on the strength of your portfolio um, and the, the decision by the admissions committees. Awesome. Thanks, Christy. So how many students are typically admitted to the MSD three-year program? So the MSD doesn't have that three-plus um, 
pathway. However, our programs do range when it comes to applicants. So if you are really curious about that, we can answer that through designgradatasu.edu and we can kind of talk through acceptance rates, but it definitely, um, it varies with every program. And um, um, I will admit that I don't have all of them memorized, but um, we definitely um, have a wide range of applicants. Some from all over the world that definitely um, that excites us. So if you really want to know that information, we're happy to provide it. Um, I just can't at this time. All right, so if the Master of Architecture and the Master of Urban Design are concurrent, then will it be considered a STEM designated um, program or not? So the Master of Architecture is STEM designated. So yes, you will be eligible for the STEM designation benefits and the OPT extension. The Master of Urban Design does not have that STEM designation, um, but since the Master of Architecture is STEM designated, then you will be um, eligible for those benefits. So will the tuition fee be affected, um, like when we have start class, with, with classes being online um, in the coming year due to the, pan, due to the pandemic, will it affect the semester's fees? So classes are not scheduled to be fully online in the coming year. They are in this new ASU sync hybrid modality. So there will be some times that you will be on campus with a smaller group of students from the class, a smaller percentage. And then there will also be times when you will be um, attending class virtually, uh, doing work from home. So with that, uh, the fees are set to remain the same. Um, the, the fees go into lots of different things um, that students take advantage of, even from home. For example, we had um, subscriptions to some of the, uh, the computer-based pr programs that you would be using. Um, so the fees will remain the same. It's important to note for international students, if you aren't able to get a visa appointment in order to attend this fall, it will still be other under the ASU SYNC designation, which is important for students to still get their visa um, with recent news. So um, it's just important to note that ASU SYNC designation, the tuition will not remain the same, but it will allow you to be eligible for getting a visa to come here. All right, so when does the MIA Spring 2021 program start? I must admit, I don't remember when the spring semester begins. Um, Christy, will you look it up for me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've been so focused on the fall semester, but typically it will um, happen in mid-January or the beginning of January. So um, that's when that program will start. So if you have deferred your admission in the MIA program to spring 2021, we will be contacting all students who are starting in the spring once the registration opens. Classes will begin January 11th. 11. Nice. Awesome. Thanks, Christy. Hope that answers your question. All right. Let's see here. What else we got? So, will there be any online certificate internships and workshops from ASU in the future? So, the answer is yes. Um, I can't speak as much to certificate internships, but workshops, we are certainly working on um, an online lecture series. We're working on online workshops too, and we'll be doing a webinar series during the fall semester as well, just to make sure that everyone gets the information that they need, but also um, get those additional resources that we would offer in person in the fall, but instead now we'll be offering them online. So that's definitely something that we're gonna look into. But then also for, um, various events that we had supporting internships, we're certainly going to be looking into transferring those online too, just depending on what happens in the spring semester when we typically have those happen. Um, we'll most likely be offering online components to that as well, just to support everyone um, when it comes to those resources. So um, question, if my undergraduate degree is a BS in communication, do you think it would be possible to enter the two-year pathway rather than the three-plus program? So you would be eligible for the three-plus program. Um, the two-year pathway, you must have a bachelor's degree. I'm not sure which program specifically you're talking about, but they're all, they all are the same. So you have to have a bachelor's degree in that field that you are pursuing for your master's. So again, if this is a master of architecture um, program you're interested in, you have to have a bachelor's degree in architecture. Um, so that you would be eligible for the three plus. And, and maybe just to elaborate on that a little bit, um, the reason for that is, is uh, purely because then the, the plus year of your pursuit will uh, introduce you to a lot of the, the tools, techniques, skills 
that you would otherwise be getting in your undergraduate degree. So even if you're uh, pursuing a degree in visual communication design, which obviously does have a, a degree of overlap with someone who's studied uh, communications in your undergraduate degree, it's a lot of the, the core, uh, you know, drawing, composition, uh, skills with certain softwares, et cetera, that you'll be getting in that plus year before then uh, moving into the remaining two years of the sort of core of that master's degree. All right. Um, so can you please tell me by when should I submit the TOEFL scores for teaching assistantships for fall 2021? So what I'll recommend, because you need to submit your English proficiency scores in order to be admitted into the university, you get those scores in as soon as you can. Um, like I said, some in some countries, these exams are unavailable. So we are also accepting Duolingo. Um, but however, Duolingo as of right now is not um, does not make students eligible for a TA position. That may change, but um, if you are really um, wanting to be eligible for a TA position, um, Christy pasted the teaching assistantship link there and you can review what the actual requirements are for that. So I suggest you look at into those requirements. Um, I would suggest you getting those in um, by the priority deadline, which is January 15th, in order for you to be reviewed for a TA position in general. Um, but like I said, we're it's a fluid situation, as we say here at ASU. Um, so we are trying to see what exactly will be accepted for TA positions, since there have been some things that have changed, uh, just given that some things are not available right now. Um, but we will be updating people as things, um, as we get in the information as well. So we'll keep everyone updated, I promise. So we answered all the questions here. Is there any final questions before we sign off? We have about five more minutes. And then any closing statements from Christy or Phil, we can, I'll welcome you to say them now. I think just thank you for joining us. Um, hope you found this helpful. Mm -hmm. And we're here to answer any remaining questions you have. So if they don't come to you right now, send us an email, we're here to help. Yeah, absolutely. And. Um... There was one uh, early Q&A uh, question that I, I typed an answer to uh, where um, there was a question about specific content for the uh, specific degree programs. In this case, it was a request for more information that is specific to the MID program. We are looking to have a number of other uh, webinars in the near future where we will begin to, uh, let's say, go deeper into uh, the individual degrees, talking about uh, curriculum, talking about faculty work and research, uh, the type of work that you would be doing as a student in that program, uh, what things like the internship and career opportunity for that uh, degree program are. So please uh, keep an eye out for future uh, opportunities to join us for other webinars. Uh, but thank you all for joining us and uh, we hope to see you all at ASU in the near future. All right, I'll wait a little bit longer for any last minute questions, but I'll just echo what Christy and Phil said. Um, the design school is a really great place to be. I love the community here, and I think that um, if you do want to design education, ASU is definitely a top choice, and there's so many resources, and the staff here is incredible in order to help everyone and answer any questions. We, we try and go above and beyond to help everyone that is interested in joining us. So um, I hope everyone is safe and doing well, and um, please let us know if you have any questions. Um, designgrad at asu.edu is where to get a hold of us. And thanks so much for attending.